Carl in Nashville. Hey, Carl, what's on your mind today? Hey, Tom, how are you doing? Good. What's up? Well, well, you know, unfortunately, uh, I wasn't surprised by the uh, the, the non indictment uh, because you know let's speak let's face it let's be honest with ourselves. Um, this may not a lot of people may not want to hear this, but there are two sets of laws in this country: one for white people and one for others, black, Hispanics, whatever. And then overlaid on top of that. There's two sets of laws, one for rich people, one for poor people. And then overlaid on top of that, there's two sets of laws, yeah. one for cops and one for everybody else. Absolutely. And, 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 and unfortunately, black people fall into the other more often than they, you know, fall into the, obviously, the white or the rich or officer. Right. So that being said, I'm not surprised. That what I was surprised by uh, was the, the district attorney. And his uh, and his his the way he pretty much act like a defense attorney during the whole process. Yeah, that was shocking because people must realize that just because you're indicted, that don't mean you you're going to get taken to trial. Just because you're taken to trial, doesn't mean you're going to get convicted. And with an indictment, you know, we've always heard, you know, you heard the old line, a ham sandwich yeah. could be indicted. Well, obviously that's not the case anymore. I've never seen prosecution work so closely uh, with with the defense and so far away from the family of the victim. Well, there's there there before. actually is. Here's some statistics. And it, by the way, it was Chief Judge Sol Wachtler of uh, New York State who famously said that a prosecutor could per- persuade a grand jury to indict a ham sandwich. Um, according, this is from um, uh, 538.com. Uh, a piece by Ben Castleman. And he notes that according to the Bureau of Justice Statistics, U.S. attorneys have prosecuted 162,000 federal cases in 2010, the last year for which we have data. And he said grand juries declined to return an indictment. Out of 162,000 cases, declined to return an indictment in 11 of those cases. 11 11 out of 162,000. But then the numbers flip completely upside down when you look at police shootings. When you're talking about police shootings and, and this... You know, independent of, of race, um, although that's another variable, as you point out, uh, that, that makes it even worse. But but basically, police are immune from criminal charges and shootings. Uh, this is the, the that's a verbatim quote from the Houston Chronicle investigation into what's going on with the Houston Police Department um, in Harris County, Texas. The, he writes, uh, for example, grand juries haven't indicted a Houston police officer since 2004. In Dallas, grand juries reviewed 81 shootings between 2008 and 2012 and returned only one indictment. And then, you know, he says there's three reasons for this. Number one is juror bias. These grand juries, these people actually sit on these grand juries for long periods of time, and they're interacting with the police uh, constantly in a very friendly fashion, uh, number one. And then you got prosecutor bias. The prosecutor, of course, depends on the police to, to do his job or her job. And then um, third, a uh, third possible uh, explanation is uh, public pressure. Uh, that, uh, you know, to, to, uh, with the police shootings to, to take it to a grand jury, even if they think that there's a weak case. And he says, these uh, explanations aren't mutually exclusive. All of these things toss in there. So. Uh, absolutely. And, and, you know, um, it, it, that, what you just said, just, uh, confirmed my theory of math being my favorite class in school. Numbers don't die. I mean, don't lie. Right. Uh, women lie, men lie, children lie, but numbers, numbers never lie. They just don't lie. They're always right there. One and one is two, no matter how many times you try and put it together. And and I'm going to end it with this time. We we are at we are at a crossroads here. There, have you ever saw the 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 picture of Emmett Till that his mother allowed to be put out? Yes. Um, yeah. I mean that that horrific. sparked the civil rights movement. I mean that. Uh, yeah. It, 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 it that changed America. That picture being publicized. That that picture, it, and I would tell I would tell anyone, go look at that picture, and that that's how you change a nation. Yeah. Uh, now we had phase two. Unfortunately, and maybe fortunately, there's no Martin Luther King come walking over the horizon right now in America. And if if some mother decides to show a picture like that and they go viral in America, um. We're going to go one or two ways. We it it could there is no more kumbaya. We can all overcome anymore. People are sick and tired of hearing that. And you can in fact have a 
an American, uh, hate to say it, Al Qaeda spring up, and and it could get horrible in this country. Or or we can have a lot of young people that see the injustice that happened in Missouri, and they can say, you know what, I'm going to go into politics. I'm going to do things better. I'm going to pay attention to my local government. I'm going to get involved. One of those two ways, and the, and the sad part about it, it just depends on which way the wind blows. Well, I don't think so, Carl. I think all the evidence indicates that it's going in the second direction, that, that people are becoming activists, that, that, the you know, the groups like Color of Change, the activist groups are growing, yeah. that, that, that people are 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 pitching in they're helping out the the yeah. the you know the, the fact of the matter is there were demonstrations all across the nation last night and I'm old enough to remember the the the, the riots in the 70s and you know where yeah. you know I I was when I was 2 years old I lived in a building in Detroit that burned down in 1972 I think it was and mm-hmm. it must have been whatever year it was <laughs> in any case uh yeah. but but my point is that you know that that spread all across the country in as as violence. It, the, the, as far as I know, the only place that burned last night was Ferguson, even though there were protests all across the country. That's another piece of evidence, I think, that this this is moving in the second direction you talked about. That that rather than people getting getting um, uh, when you have hopelessness, when you have hopelessness, and and you look and say, you know what, Trayvon Martin, Mike Brown, I give up. Yeah. When, when you when you have that, I mean, you know, but people aren't giving up. This, and it, it comes to the point where people will say, you know what, I give up, or or you can keep fighting on. And yeah. how much fight uh, Black America have in them in this country? I, I don't know that. I don't have a crystal ball. Uh, I I know that 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 I'm willing. You know, it, it, to me, it, it it eats at me day in and day out to see these injustices keep happening. I mean, it's day in day out. Decade in, decade out, century in, century out of injustice against a group of people in this country. And one of these days, they're going to be like, you know what? Enough is enough. Yeah. Yeah. We, we shall see. And let's not also, you know, forget uh, the Native Americans who suffered a genocide and a Holocaust. And, and uh, although that's a completely different topic, I suppose. But, but I don't, I, actually, no, I don't think so. I, I, I think that the, the history of this country you know, is just steeped in blood and the, 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 the blood of genocide, the blood of slavery, which, and, and the genocide associated with that, the, you know, it's just, this country is steeped in blood. And, but it, it, I am encouraged that, that there's, that there's activism happening around the country and that it, it looks like peaceful activism. And I, uh, you know, Carl, your, your, your comments about, People just, you know, having despair and giving up. I'm, you know, I, I also we're seeing this, like, you know, with an economy that for 30 years has just ripped apart the middle class in America, and people are starting. You know, Chuck Schumer this morning gave a, a speech here in D.C. about how Democrats have to start behaving like Democrats again and start talking about, you know, a positive and active role of government, how how the country turned in 1980, and and and, and so I, you know, at a whole bunch of different levels. At, at, I think that people are waking up and, and things are, are moving in a positive direction. And I, I just, you know, hope and pray that we continue going that way and that uh, you and I, Carl, and, and all the rest of us can be agents of positive change. Carl, thank you so much for the call and uh, for, for listening to the program. We'll be back. It's quarter, quarter to 40, 15 minutes before. You're listening to Tom Hartman. Visit TomHartman.com for audio and video archives. Back with uh, your call and you know, your thoughts, my thoughts. We're, we're going to process this thing. We'll be back. 